In this video, we'll be reviewing the basics of exporting data and creating pivot tables. After watching this video, you should be able to demonstrate how to export data from Web Checkout, understand how to use basic formulas in Excel, and how to create pivot tables. You will need Microsoft Excel in order to make these tables. Today, we will demonstrate how to create tables showing resource and resource type usage. You can use this report to answer questions such as, what resources and types are most heavily circulated, and how many hours or days were resources or types used. Pivot tables can be created in three easy steps. Export data from Web Checkout, organize that data using Excel, and finally, create tables and charts using pivot tables. Let's get started. We'll start by gathering usage activity from Web Checkout. We recommend using the Find Resource Schedule report for this. To find this report, select the Resources menu, then Find Resource Schedules. This will load the Find Resource Schedule screen. Now, adjust search terms and results columns as needed. For our report, we have selected the following search terms. We're restricting our search to the J&B Checkout Center. Next, we're selecting Checkout Completed in the Schedule Type field to ensure only completed allocations are in our report. Now, select Add Search Term, then Pick Up, Earliest Actual, and Pick Up, Latest Actual. Pick Up Earliest Actual will allow searching for resources picked up on or after the date entered. Pick Up Latest Actual will allow searching for resources picked up on or before the date entered. Adding both of these fields will allow for searching through a specific time frame. Finally, we'll adjust our results columns. To add results columns, under Excluded, select the results headers to display on your data. We'll add resource type to our results. To remove result columns, under Included, select result headers you would like to omit. We'll remove Scheduled Buy, Scheduled Pickup, and Scheduled Return from our results. Now, select Find to run the report. Depending on the amount of activity, this may take several minutes. Once the report has generated, please note the number of results. If this number is greater than 8,000, adjust search terms until the number is under 8,000. Reports with over 8,000 results may not export from Web Checkout. To reduce the number of results, adjust the time frame or change the number of checkout centers included in the report. We recommend choosing time frames based on one to three months of activity. The report can be ran multiple times to export results for the entire time frame and all checkout centers. To export results, select Export As on the top right-hand corner, then Export CSV. Now that results have exported, our results columns include Allocation ID, Resource, Resource Type, Schedule Type, Actual Pickup, and Actual Return. Note how the columns are organized in your document. You will need to know which column your information is displayed in to format each formula correctly. Each resource in an allocation is displayed in its own row with information about that resource activity displayed in each column. Now, let's add a formula to our data. Formulas used in Excel are used to extract important information from data. The formula we will be adding is the usage hours formula which you could find below. Let's start by labeling this column usage hours. I like to color this cell so I can easily tell a formula has been added. This formula is used to calculate the usage hours of resources or resource types within an allocation. This formula is expressed as the following. To use this formula, actual return time should reference the cell that actual return time first appears in on your data. Actual pickup time should reference the first cell actual pickup time appears in. To reference the correct cell, you can either type in or copy and paste the formula into the cell below the header. Then, click the cell to reference to automatically populate it into your formula. 
You can also type in the correct cells to reference. As we're calculating time, let's format results by clicking the column letter to highlight the column, then right-click and select Format Cells. Select the appropriate format option, then select OK. We recommend checking the usage hours against the usage time to ensure this cell is formatted correctly. Now that we have added our formula, double-click the square in the bottom right-hand side of the cell. This will drag the formula down to the end of your data. Now, let's create our pivot table. Depending on your version of Excel, the pivot table option may be found in a different location. On my version of Excel, I select Data, then Summarize with a pivot table. Make sure the pivot table will be placed on a new worksheet, then select OK. From the new worksheet, the pivot table builder should appear. If the builder does not automatically appear, click in the area of the worksheet that says Pivot Table 1. The Pivot Table Builder should now appear. The Pivot Table Builder will be used to build the actual table. You can add or remove filters, columns, rows, and values by dragging and dropping data field names into these categories. Field names are the names of the columns we created in our data worksheet. Rows are added as the data you would like to summarize. Values add the numerical value to your pivot table. This can be summarized as either a count or a sum of values. Columns are used to apply a second variable to the table. Filters are used to apply a filter to the entire table to only show specific results. For our table today, we will only be using rows and values. To create a pivot table, we'll first add our rows. As we're looking to view resource and resource type activity, we'll drag resource type and then resource below. This will allow us to view activity summarized by resource type. Then we can drill down to the individual resource. To calculate usage hours, we'll click and drag usage hours to values. To calculate the total checkouts, we'll click and drag allocations to values. Format the values so they are calculated properly by clicking the I next to each value field. For usage hours, as we're looking for total usage hours, values should be formatted to appear as sum of usage hours. To calculate total checkouts, allocation should be formatted to appear as count of allocations. Now, ensure the cells are formatted correctly on the pivot table. Highlight the column that lists usage hours, right-click, then select Format Cells. Select Time, then select the option that displays hours, minutes, and seconds in a six-digit format. Once again, to ensure time and count is displayed accurately, we suggest testing it against your data worksheet. Resource types are now collapsible and expandable to view resource and resource type usage. Right-click the table to expand all or collapse all. To view usage only by resource type, simply collapse the resource types or remove resource from rows. Now that our pivot table is created, we'll choose a chart to help describe our data. To include a chart, select Insert, then choose the type of chart you would like to see. For this pivot table, we're going to use the column graph. To adjust the chart, right-click, then Update. For our chart, we're going to omit the grand total of usage hours from this chart. Select Data and highlight the data we want visible on our table. Now, using the chart, you can see which resources or types were used the most at your checkout center. Thank you for watching, and before we end this video, we want to leave you with a few quick tips and reminders. Always check the pivot table against your data worksheet to ensure consistent and accurate data. If data appears to not populate correctly, try refreshing the pivot table or formatting the cells. Be sure to view our documentation page. This will give additional information on how to create pivot tables. Also, you can search the internet for pivot table tutorials and helpful instructions. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, please email implementation at webcheckout.net.